Hey everyone, and welcome to not a Minecraft video. So today is my 18th birthday. It is currently the third of, well, the second of July while I'm recording this. But the day this is uploaded, it will be about probably I don't know 5 a.m. Uh, <laughs> the third of July in Australia, East Coast where I live, and uh, I will be celebrating my 18th birthday. Even though the older I've gotten, the less and less I celebrate my birthday. <laughs> I guess that goes for everyone. Um, but yeah, this is going to be my Draw My Life video. Uh, a lot of people have always asked for this and I figured I would do one now. Uh, I don't have a whiteboard or anything, so I'm just going to draw it on, um, I'm just going to draw it on, what's it called, like a notebook or something and then turn over the page or whatever. And I'm recording with my webcam because I don't have a camera or like a tripod and I really don't know. I'm not a professional at this stuff because there's no video on YouTube on how to draw, draw, how to do a Draw My Life video. And I go, I, it's just a, I, I don't know, it's just a freaking... It's a personal thing, so you know you do it the way you want to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of just talking from the top of my head. I'm not really like a scripted kind of guy. I'm just gonna, you know, go from the day that I was born to the day, you know, today, and uh, cover my favorite parts of my life. Um, I'm gonna try and stay positive and stick to the positive things because there's so many draw my life videos where it's just like so sad and stuff. Uh, but you know, the sadder things in life stick out more than the happier things. But I'm gonna try and make the happier things stand out. But anyway, let's get started. So on the 3rd of July 1996, sometime during the middle of the night, a beautiful baby popped out and my parents, Stephanie and Sven, decided to call me Mitchell. Uh, I had already had a older brother at the time and he had been born in 1994. Um, I think he was born in the back of a car. I don't know. I don't know why I remember that. Um, but yeah, I we were a happy, happy family of four. Um, we lived in Australia for like a year or so, and then we moved to Singapore. Uh, and if you guys notice me in pictures, I always have this scar on my forehead. And a lot of people always bring up the scar, like, how did you get this scar? And, like, I've never really talked in a video just because I don't know, I've, I've never really brought, brought it up. And until I cut my hair recently, um, you could never really see it, like, my hair covered it. And it's not really a thing that, like, I'm insecure about, it's just a scar. Uh, I have plenty of scars on my body, um, that are all cool, like, they all have cool stories to them. One's actually a pretty lame story. But, um... Yeah, uh, I actually got this scar on my forehead w when I lived in Singapore. Uh, we lived in Singapore for about two years, maybe a year or so. I don't know, I can't really remember. And in Singapore, there's a really, really nice zoo. And the apartment that we lived in had these big, huge, like, steel frame doors. And the, the floors were marble, and they were really slippery. And I was just, I think I was just learning to walk. I don't know too specifically, but I was so excited to go to the zoo. And I run, 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 run down the hallway, and I slide. And I think someone was opening the door, the door was open ajar. And I hit my forehead right onto the door, and I had to go to hospital. And my dad's told me about this story. He said it's one of the most traumatic things he's ever done in his life was when uh, we went to this like hospital in Singapore this like yucky hospital and um, the doctor like put stitches in my forehead and my dad had to hold me down like so I didn't touch my forehead or like scream or like hurt anyone or anything and I think I got something like it was I think it's like tw it's not seven stitches I think it was actually I think it was seven stitches so it's either the number in my head is like 7 to 14 which is like kind of a, a, a big difference but I think it was something like 7 stitches and um, later, the, later that week I think it was actually the next day we went to the zoo I had a big scar on my forehead everyone was staring at me um, <laughs> uh, living in Singapore actually with like all these um, I think the I don't know what what religion this comes from or what like sort of culture this comes from but being a blonde baby and living in Singapore with all these people like um they they think like blonde babies are like special so i have these like like they like they, they touching like a blonde baby's hair like, gives you good luck and i have these stitches in my forehead and all these ladies are coming up and touching my hair just because they want good luck or something i don't know yeah it was pretty scary at the time but in a couple years uh we moved back to australia we actually moved to singapore for my dad's job and we actually did quite a bit of traveling uh for my dad's job which was really really cool as a child i got to go to so many countries uh i have so many memories of flying on like fancy airlines and stuff because business class was like the, the cool thing uh you know uh we went to like thailand bangkok um with some other places went to like england um, but yeah, we moved back to Australia where we lived in my grandparents' house for a couple years whilst my dad and my other family, uh, some other people in my family, and my, uh, my uncles, my grandparents, uh, they helped, and my mom, they helped, uh, build the house that I currently live in. So, yeah, this was a, this was a long project that my dad worked on, um, with some other family members. It took, like, it took a couple years, 
Um, but yeah, uh, they built this big, beautiful house, big red roof, uh, amazing garden, uh, and they built it from the ground up. I watched it start from nothing and turn into this amazing thing. Uh, and you know, the first day when I when I came uh, into this house, it was so big because I was such a little kid. But now that I live in it, it's kind of gone small. But it is like such a such a nice house, even though it's in a location where the internet is absolute crap. This house is amazing, and I really hope it like it stays in our family somehow. But it probably won't. It's a <laughs> I don't think it is, but it's a really really nice house. And my name's written outside in the concrete, which is uh which is always gonna stay there as a memory. So I guess I can talk about a couple of childhood memories that I can bring up. Um, so after we moved into this nice, beautiful house, we had one dog at the time, and that dog was called Snuffy. She was a Border Collie. Uh, the name Snuffy comes from, I think, someone from freaking Teletubbies, or Ses- Ses- I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we had this beautiful curly coat Border Collie called Snuffy, and my parents wanted to get another Border Collie. So we went to this Border Collie breeding place, and we looked at all these puppies that were so beautiful! And the one that stuck out, st uh, stood out was a blue Border Collie, and her name was Velvet, or Blue Velvet. And, uh, we decided to pick her up, and we took her home. Oh man, the memories of this dog. She freaking, she was a troublemaker, always jumping the fence, always running away. Uh, she was, she was pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> she would always freaking pull on the carpet and stuff, and my dad would get so mad at her. Uh, she grew up so fast, though. like, I just remember waking up one day and she could jump on the bed, but that's, that's what dogs do. Um, but yeah, she was a really, really beautiful dog, and she was a, she was an awesome dog to have in, our in my childhood. Another childhood memory was probably around 2000, the year 2000. Uh, when, uh, I think, I don't know, it was some family event, there was a bunch, of, well, I was at my uncle's house, and, um, we were watching, like, Star Wars and stuff, and my uncle pulled out this, um, I don't know, I didn't know what it was at the time, but he, he said it was, like, a game thing, but I didn't think it was video games, I sort of just thought of it as another game thing, because the way I'd seen video games on TV and stuff was, like, PlayStation 1, and what he pulled out was a Super Nintendo, which, Think of it now, like that was a pretty sick thing at the time, but me being a little kid not knowing what it was, I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, he gave me and my brother a Super Nintendo, we got to play it a lot and then he let us take it home. Uh, it was so cool at the time, uh, we played games like Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Doom, uh, Sim City, uh, what else was there, Mario, uh, we went and bought like a bunch of like uh, a Mario mix and it was really, really cool. There was a Game Boy adapter so we could play Game Boy games. And uh, I'm so glad that he hooked us up with one of those because actually later that year, I think for my brother's birthday, we he, he got uh, Pokemon. And being a Pokemon fan since like since I lived in Singapore, uh, it was really, really cool to play Pokemon, like, you know, you know, get to Pokemon Yellow where you got to, you know, be Ash from the TV show, which was crazy. Um, and... Uh, and, and, and yeah, I, that's where my, my gaming started from. That's that's how I got into gaming. Uh, later, my parents actually bought me and my brother Game Boy Advances for Christmas, which I can't thank them enough for because if it wasn't for that, I would have never... I got, you know, they could have bought us freaking balls. They could have got us freaking balls for Christmas and we would have been sport kids. But because of that one decision that they did, I am now a YouTuber. So thank you, mom and dad. Like, I <laughs> isn't that crazy? That's the butterfly effect at its best. If I hadn't gotten into Pokemon, like, I probably would have never done YouTube because that's what really spiked my interest in gaming as a child. Um, but yeah, I have so many memories of playing Pokemon on Game, on Game Boy Advance with my brother, trading with my friends, uh, absolutely sucking at the game because I was a little kid. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. So after living in this beautiful house for a couple of years, uh, it is now time to go to school, Mitchell. Time to go to school. And uh, my school, being, I don't know, at school when I was when I was younger, my first few years of school, it was really, really enjoyable. The school's nice. The teachers are really nice. Australian teachers are the coolest teachers. And, um... And, and, uh, and yeah, I was, I was a cool kid. I wasn't like a lame kid. I wasn't, you know, picked on very much. I was, I, I wouldn't say I was a cool kid. I wasn't a sport kid or anything. I wasn't good at sport or anything, but I don't know. I guess I was just that chill guy that a lot of people could talk to and was cool. But you know, I was freaking like five at the time. So I don't know why I'm saying this, but yeah, I was really, really cool. I got to meet a lot of friends and stuff. And I don't know what I'm talking about the first few years of primary school or elementary school, but Yes, uh, I have another memory of when I was little. I was actually chasing a butterfly on this little like ledge outside my street, and um, I remember falling off the ledge and cutting my knee open. Oh man, <laughs> that's another scar on my body, right there. Freaking three stitches in my in my knee from chasing a butterfly. That's pretty lame, right there. 
Anyway, moving along a few years, um, uh, around my my ninth birthday, uh, July, June, July of 2005, my dad and mum come up to me and my brother and say, hey, would you guys like to move to England? Um, and at the time, being a little kid, I was like, yeah, of course I want to move to England. I want to go on holiday. Holidays are the coolest. Um, but not really thinking too much of the bigger picture. But of course, we said yes. Uh, my dad went away. He, he moved to England for a, a few weeks. He was always flying backwards and forwards for his job. He was hardly ever home sometimes. We, would, we wouldn't see him for like two, three weeks at a time. Um, but, you know, gotta make your money. Um, yeah, we, we moved to England a little bit later that year. I actually celebrated my ninth birthday. My mom celebrated her 40, no, nope, not 49th. 39th birthday and uh, and then we flew to England we packed up all our house um, yeah it was crazy rented out our house packed up everything packed up our beautiful dog blue velvet sent her off um, and we moved to the UK and that's where my UK life started it was actually pretty cool on the the, the day of flying into England was actually a really cool day um, my my mom surprised me and my brother with uh, presents in the morning. I was like, "What's this?" And they were, they were Game Boy Advance SPs, which were the ones with the backlights. Like, <laughs> the Game Boy Advance was cool and stuff, but when you came to nighttime, you could not play that thing at all. You guys would probably know if you were freaking like '90s childs. Um, but yeah, we got a Game Boy Advance SPs, and they were they were so sick. Uh, and then we you know went on like a twenty wow twenty hour flight. Um, business class and it was a, an amazing flight playing freaking Yoshi's Island on my on my Game Boy playing Pokemon Emerald and 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 Sapphire and Ruby a lot of fun uh, and then we arrive on England on the 8th of July 8th 7th of July something like that 2005 and that couldn't have been the worst day to arrive in England actually that day was the day when the London bombings happened and uh, we arrived in the airport and everyone was getting evacuated and stuff not as traumatic as it sounds, but it was a little bit weird. Like we, we were standing around the airport waiting for my dad to pick us up. And then these people told us to just go outside and we experienced the not so harsh English weather because it was summer. Um, but yeah, we, we went around, my dad drove us around London. We went to uh, 7-Eleven and like those scary police officers with assault rifles and stuff. It was, it was pretty scary, but uh, we left London. We went to uh, a county known as Kent, and that was where we lived for the next three years. Uh, we lived in West Morling, and we lived in an estate called Kings Hill. I guess I can say this now because I don't live there anymore. Um, but I think it's an estate. Isn't it an estate? I think that's what it's called. But this place was like the the, the, the dream life. Like the, it, That's what it looked like. The houses were so pretty. Um, you know, just it was beautiful, green, flat, like... I wouldn't say modern, but like, you know, suburban area. And um, we went down our street. We went down, like, it was so different moving from Australia to London or England. Um, just like the culture was so different. Um, but yeah, we, 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 uh, we went down into our house and we arrived to a three story, uh, I think it's called like a, no, I think it was like a semi detached uh, townhouse. And that's what it's called. So, you know, we shared like the house wall like one of the walls of the house was connected to another house which is so weird to think about now but i don't know i guess it was weird at the time we had to be really quiet at night though if we got if we were yelling at night we we're getting in trouble from our parents a lot uh <laughs> um yeah but uh that's the way we lived for the next uh three years of our life it was uh it was really cool it was really cool living in england um you know it, it was flat so i got to you know bmx and skateboard a lot that's how i learned how to ride my bike a lot better and and skateboard so a couple weeks after living in England uh, I actually had to go to school uh, it was like so amazing for the first couple weeks but then it's like because it's sort of like a holiday but then it sort of like moved into like oh crap I have to go to school now and those first couple of days of school were really 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 culture shocky um, let me give you an example here in Australia we play a, a sport or in Victoria at least we play Aussie rules football, which is really, really different to soccer or American football. It's really, really like rough, and I don't know it's just a cool sport. I, I think. Well, I don't know. I didn't really follow the sport that much, but then playing that every day, like at, at school, and then going to England, and everyone plays soccer. I never played soccer in my life. I didn't know, even know the rules of it. Like I, I picked up the ball and I got freaking t yelled at by people, and I couldn't kick it because like the it was just weird the way you kick the ball. You got to kick it with the inside of your foot. I never learned how to play soccer. And, uh, yeah, it was really scary. Uh, I wouldn't say I necessarily got bullied, but I got picked on for, like, being Australian. Like, people saying, like, oh, can you say this? Can you say this? Oh, you pronounce this word wrong. And, of course, being in England from Australia, everyone says stuff differently. Like, uh, what was one word that stood out? Like, um, what's one? Oh, well, soccer and football. You weren't allowed to say soccer. You had to say football. 
Uh, otherwise, she'd get picked on. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a little bit scary. Anyway, a couple of weeks of school, it rolled into summer. I was only there for two weeks, and then it was uh, six weeks of summer break, which was nice. And I got to meet a bunch of uh, people who lived on the street with me. And towards the end of summer, I was actually just riding my bike around, acting like a cool kid, a cool little nine-year-old. And uh, I turned into my street, and there's a bin on my road. And I tried to go around it, but my handlebars clipped it. And this bin was full, full to the top. And I crashed into it. My arm sort of like hit my handlebars as I fell, and it broke my little bones. I broke my arm in two places. Uh, it was so. Oh my god! I was like, I was so close to my house, and I, w I was so scared though, cause like I, like it felt so far away. But I was, I was probably like a hundred meters away from my house. And luckily, there was a guy uh, not too far behind me. And uh, I was screaming like as soon as I got up, I knew that my arm was broken. I could just you, I looked at it; it was all mangled and stuff. And I was like, "That's broken, that's broken for sure." I was screaming. I was like, "I was just I was yelling my address to this guy." I was just telling him, "I was like, get my mother right now. We need to go to hospital and get this bitch fixed." Um, <laughs> that's I didn't say that, but like I was so sad. And he ran. He helped out a lot. That guy's a cool guy. He's a lifesaver. Um, and uh, yeah, we went to hospital. I got my arm all plastered up. That's the first time I've ever broken a bone in my life, and it's the only time. I've, well, I've broken my toe, but that was kind of lame. But uh, yeah, that's like one of the only times ever uh, broken a bone, and I don't want it to happen again. There was a lot of pain, but uh, yeah, went back to school. Had a cast on my arm. The teacher was an absolute bitch to me. Freaking so rude. Like she was making fun. Like she was so rude because I had to write with my left hand. She was like being rude about my handwriting. Some of the English teachers are just too strict compared to the Australian teachers. They were like, if you weren't like focusing on your work for longer than, you know, 30 seconds, I you would get like in trouble and yelled at and oh boy, it was scary. Um, but yeah, after a couple of years of being in, uh, of, of, uh, of primary school, I went to, you know, high school, which was just not even any better. <laughs> Actually, before I went to high school, uh, 2005, Christmas of 2005 was one of the best Christmases uh, of my life. It was the first Christmas I ever had in England, or one of the two, and uh, it was so beautiful. It was like snowing, it was cold, uh, we had like a traditional Christmas dinner. Uh, now like when we have Christmas, we always eat fish and stuff, which is just like, ugh, I hate fish. Um, but yeah, we had like a turkey, we had pork and freaking potatoes and all that good stuff. We opened up presents, it was just the four of us. Uh, later we went out with uh, some people on our street and we went over to their Christmas party and that was just a lot of fun. It was a really, really nice Christmas. It wasn't too like action packed and, or anything. It was just, it was just fitting. It was like a traditional Christmas. It was cold. Uh, we could listen to Christmas carols. It was really, really nice. Um, I, I, uh, we actually got a video camera for, for Christmas that year and I really want to go try and find some of those videos and just embarrass myself by watching them. But yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a really nice Christmas. So moving into uh, secondary school in England, uh, I probably wasn't the coolest kid, I wouldn't lie. Uh, my hobbies at the time were playing RuneScape. Um, <laughs> not video games, just RuneScape. Uh, actually, nah, I played other video games, uh, but I was really addicted to RuneScape. Um, I liked wrestling, which is another weird thing that not a lot of people liked. I liked... Uh, skateboarding and, and freaking, uh, what's it called? Riding my bike, BMXing. Um, and the, the cool thing in England, or the cool thing at my school, was to be good at sport, which was nothing I was really ever good at. Oh, it was, it was not a nice time. Um, so I started to go to the internet as a, as a place to hang out. And, uh, you know, one day I saw a thing pop up called Google Videos uh, on Google, and I was like, oh, what's this? Searched, uh, searched some RuneScape videos on there, found a site called YouTube, and uh, this is how I became a YouTuber. My god. If it wasn't actually for my brother, my brother made a YouTube account called like Guitar, Dude, Guitar Dude 1994 or something like that. Uh, I probably would have never had a YouTube channel. I actually based my first YouTube channel off my brother's YouTube name because um, I was a little, I was a little brother looking up to my big brother. And uh, I started the channel to post skateboarding videos, really, really bad skateboarding videos and biking videos. They later got removed, and um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a terrible channel. It was absolutely so bad. <laughs> I was watching all these cool like skateboarding videos on YouTube. And I'm like, I can do that. But we didn't like film anything, we just like took pictures of each other skateboarding and stuff like that, like it wasn't too good. Um, but yeah, I really got addicted to YouTube, I was just searching things into the YouTube search bar, I was watching wrestling videos, I was watching uh, skateboarding videos, I was watching just 
funny stuff that would come up, fail videos, Amer uh, America's Funniest Time videos, they were some of the ones that I would always watch, um, and music and all that stuff. I was addicted at YouTube. I remember in the day, back in the day, YouTube used to count, 2008 is when I made my first YouTube channel, and YouTube used to count the amount of videos you had watched, and I think at one point that, that counter was at like 50,000 videos uh, before the YouTube stopped counting that, which is absolutely insane. Anyway, so it comes to around 2008, uh, I think it was around August 2008, and uh, it's time to time to go back. Time to go back to Australia. My my dad's freaking work thing was over. He he'd done all the stuff that he needed to do, and we began to pack up all our stuff. Took our freaking beautiful dog home. Took everything that we could. Uh, unpacked the house. Moved everything out, and we flew back home to Australia. Sat the the. <laughs> The way going from England, Australia to England was absolutely amazing. Going from England to Australia wasn't as amazing. We had to play, we had to pay for our own flights, so we didn't get any fancy like business class flights. We had to fly like these yucky airlines because uh, we just, you know, we didn't have like we couldn't really afford uh, like the fancy ones. And uh, we flew back to Australia and um, yeah, lived in yucky Australia because it was winter at the time, oh, <laughs> it was not nice. So after moving back to Australia, I began to work a lot on my YouTube channel. Uh, I posted like wrestling uh, animation videos and I used to talk over wrestling matches. You can go on that channel, you can see what's up and what's not. I deleted so many videos. I think I've uploaded over like 400 videos to that channel, but so many of them are deleted. Um, but yeah, YouTube is really what entertained me back in those days. It was a, it was a great creative website to go on um, and uh, I had, I had a lot of time off school. I had, I think like three months off school or whatever, like till, till the, till like February next year. I had like five months off school actually. Um, so I got to do YouTubers just all day and had, had so much fun with it. And, um, and then I had to go back to school. School started and, you know, being a new kid again, uh, and moving back from a different country. I didn't have too many friends going to an all boys school. I didn't really fit in too much. Like because I was sort of like an artsy kid and everyone was like a sporty kind of thing. Uh, a lot of my old friends had changed from like the people I used to know, like they changed a lot. And I really didn't become friends with a lot of my old friends again. I sort of just made new friends with the people who I sort of liked uh, or liked the same things as me. Um, but yeah, I really didn't enjoy school after I came back. Uh, I was a little bit optimistic at the start, but then I became just slowly like really, really uninterested in it. And all I would look forward to every day was just getting home and going on the internet and talking to my internet friends uh, that I had made over like, you know, coming back and posting on all these forums and stuff. And uh, that's what I was really, really excited for. I think around 2010 uh, was when I sort of uh, started my big, big passion for gaming again. I don't know what sparked me back into it. I think I just watched one YouTube video and I was like, damn, I, I really like gaming. And I started a new YouTube channel uh, and this was a channel focused on Pokemon. The channel got so many views for a channel that has 500 subscribers and so many, uh, so many, I, got I, I grew that channel from five videos up to like a few hundred thousand views and 500 subscribers. And then I never posted on it again. I sort of just like, I, I, I felt like I got too addicted to gaming, so I sort of wanted to step back from it and I stopped uploading to that channel. Uh, I tried other YouTube channels. I tried making vlogging channels where I made like vlogs. I tried, you know, all sorts of other things. You know, they never really got me popular. And then I started the Strawberry Jam YouTube channel uh, in around 2000, 2000, what was it, like 11, I think I made this channel, 2012. Uh, and I actually made this channel to make, you know, like skit videos and just weird, funny videos and stuff. But you can see that didn't go in that direction. I think around 2000, 2012, um, I can't really remember the time. Uh, I think it was around Christmas either 2011 or 2012 moving into, I think we're moving into 2012 that year um, This was a big shock to me So one day I was just watching some YouTube videos and then my dad came in my room He's like can you come downstairs and uh, I received the most shocking information I've ever like received in like my whole life uh, I think I would have to say that uh, and my parents told me that, they, that me and my brother that they're gonna get a divorce and it completely just shocked me um, you know, my dad was moved out in a few months after, like a couple of weeks after that. Um, and yeah, it was really weird. Like I never thought that was going to happen, but you know, it upset me a lot. You know, I, I'm, I, I, it's, it's sort of just, 
it's a thing now, you know, like, <laughs> I've gotten used to it, and, you know, my parents are happy now, which is, you know, what's always what I want to see. So, let's start with, what should we do now? 2012 was when I started YouTube, actually, so it must have been 2011 that that happened, or 2010, probably, holy crap. Well, I'm old. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, we move into the year 2012, and I think I set out for myself in 2011, I wanted 2011 to be the best year of my life. Uh, cause the end of 2010 wasn't the best for me. That must have been what, it, yeah, that must have been it. Um, and I didn't think I really achieved that in 2011, but as I moved into 2012, I wanted to set that goal again, and I, I did it. Uh, at the start of 2012, I moved into grade 10 of school. Uh, of course, I didn't like school at all. I hated school. School was the worst. But we actually received laptops at the start of the school year. And, you know, being a kid who's addicted to the internet, on the internet constantly, uh, I was like, yes, dude, I can escape at school. Uh, of course, that got into me into, like, a lot of trouble. But if it wasn't for me getting these laptops, like, it was a MacBook, uh, I would have never been able to make my first Minecraft video. Uh, I had never really had a computer that could run Minecraft good. Uh, cause I had always had like a yucky laptop and, um, yeah, I got this really, you know, I wouldn't say really good computer, but I got this MacBook that could record Minecraft and I was super pumped. I had been watching a guy called Chimney Swift for a while. I watched his Skyblock series. I began watching his Minecraft file series and he really, really inspired me to make uh, Minecraft videos. I wasn't the best commentator or anything. Uh, I've slowly grown into a much better commentator. I wouldn't say I'm the best the best commentator, but you know, I slowly ran into a better one and uh, he really inspired me to make my first series on YouTube Which is strawberry island. It's so bad going back and watching those old videos But hey, you know you start from somewhere uh, a lot of youtubers delete their first videos, but I'm not really into that stuff and um, Yeah, that really spiked up my my channel like my, that started my channel It wasn't the most popular series it lasted like 18 episodes I think before I like accidentally deleted the world uh, while I was clearing out some files Which I felt really bad for but I, I don't think I really ever explained that because I don't want my subscribers I don't want you guys to get angry uh, I tried some other series I did like a survival map I did some mods and uh, we, you know, as we moved into like late, late 2012-ish, uh, I think it was later 2012, uh, my channel had grown to about a thousand subscribers. Uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, a lot of people found out about my YouTube channel quickly uh, around my school, and it was an easy thing for people to make fun of me for. But I had grown into a much more confident person because of like these personalities that I saw on YouTube and how they act. And um, I sort of just brushed off. I was like, "Hey, dude, it's a thing that I like to do. You know, look at these comments. Look at all these likes. Look how look look. I'm, I'm I know like people like to watch those videos. And now I oh I love it so much because I can just rub it in their faces. Like, ha, suck it. You still have to go to school, and I'm sitting here every day making beautiful YouTube videos for beautiful people across the world. Like, oh, I love that. Um." Yeah, but I, 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 you know, grew my channel to a thousand subscribers, and I started a new series uh, called Pixelmon, and this was the real spike of my channel, and I can't, I can't thank enough. There's so many of you old Pixelmon subscribers who are still, still subscribe, still tweet at me, still comment on my videos, and I can't thank you guys enough for sticking around with me for so long, putting up with all my BS and stuff. Uh, I can't thank you enough. It, that that series really got me started. I found a Mew, and that video went viral. It got like a hundred thousand views in a, in a, in a, like less than a couple of weeks um my subscribers went from you know uh my subscribers went from you know like 20 like 1 to 20 a day to like 80 60 100 100 200 200 which was so crazy for me at the time just watching my analytics go bam like right through the roof was absolutely crazy my views went from like you know a hundred thousand to a, a month to you know freaking five hundred thousand a million um and i began earning enough money off youtube uh so i could quit my part-time job uh, i actually got a part-time job a couple i don't know i think it was uh christmas 2011 i got my part-time job and uh, it was working at Kmart and I hated it so much. I, I didn't feel comfortable doing anything. Uh, it was awkward. Um, and yeah, but I was so glad the day when I got that paycheck from, uh, from YouTube and I was like, wow. I made more this month than I made doing uh, part-time work. So I think it's about time I can quit this job. Um, you know, and then that led into me uploading more videos, being able to upload daily because I didn't have to worry about work. Uh, I sort of swept school under the carpet and focused more on my YouTube channel uh, because, you know, you guys make me so happy and, like, I, I love that I would, you know, make videos every day and, you know, be able to do this as my job and everything. It was crazy. Uh, and then later, uh, I, you know, was just not focusing on school at all, which is probably a negative. You know, you always got to get your education, but... 
I don't know. I, I'm so glad that I've I, I dropped high school. I dropped high school in 2013 last year, uh, June 2013. So it's already been a year. And uh, honestly, probably the best decision I've ever made in my life. I'm not gonna lie. It was a pretty damn good decision. I do miss high school a bit, like just talking to people, chilling out, um, you know, not having to worry about like certain things, just being a school kid. But it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I've never, I've, I, like the past year for me has been like the best year of my life. Like I really wish everyone could have a life like this, but like everyone can't but I, I know that sounds sad but like it's it's absolutely amazing waking up each and every day and making youtube videos for you guys uh and you know later this year i'm gonna be moving out and uh doing youtube as a full-time job and um it's it's crazy it's really crazy to think about it you know 18 years on this world and you know i'm already freaking working full-time and you know living by myself soon it's a little bit scary to think think about but i can't thank you enough the person who's watching this video, the person who's subscribed, the person who's liked the video, the person who's ever tweeted at me, the person who's ever sent me a letter in the mail, who a person who's ever done anything. I really can't thank you enough for just, you know, everything that you've done for me. Uh, you guys have, you know, made my life so much better. Uh, you know, you've brought me up the times when I was down. Uh, I've met so many, like, awesome and amazing friends. Uh, and, you know, even though friendships are all up and down and, you know, sometimes they end and sometimes, you know, an ending, a friendship starts a new one. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I, I love it all. It was all perfect because it led me to, you know, who, where I am today and who I am today. And I really can't thank you guys enough. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, and, uh, yeah, this has been my draw of my life. Uh, today is my 18th year of my life. I'm ready to go live on being an adult. <laughs> um, I'll probably do another draw of my life in another 18 years when I'm 36 and, hopefully have children and uh, I don't know if I'll still be you doing YouTube <laughs> I don't know how YouTube how long YouTube's gonna last I hope forever we'll see um, but yes I can't thank you guys enough I all hope you enjoyed this video I all hope you have a fantastic day week year and um, yeah thank you so much for watching